Amen, 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 amen. Well, if, if you got your Bibles on this morning, um, I, I believe that God can do a quick thing with us on today. Amen. I want you to turn to the book of Philippians chapter 4. Philippians chapter 4. And again, as I mentioned and before we began to pray today, a couple of the things that really bog people down and keep them from walking by faith is fear and worry. And unfortunately, they run rampant not just in the world but in the body of Christ and people say they walk by faith but I don't really believe that that's the answer to what they're going through well it's the answer but it's not what they're doing anybody can say I believe God I mean I, I mean you know what I'm talking about but the litmus test to whether you believe God or not is when you get yourself in or when you get in a jam and what your response is going to be once you get in the jam that's when you know you're walking by faith or not. Because most of us faint when we're confronted with issues of w worry and fear. And fainting ain't hard to do. Anybody can faint. Standing up is the hard, th hard part. And most of us can't stand because the Bible in Ephesians said after you've done all to stand, do what? Stand. Amen. Amen. Ain't that, nobody has trouble with that first stand. Everybody can do that one. But it's that second one that we have a hard time with. Weebles wobble, but they don't fall down. Amen? Amen. The enemy might push you, but don't fall down. As a matter of fact, the Bible says, get up quick. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. Well, in your Bibles, again, if you've got Philippians 4 and 6, let's go there. It says, be anxious for some things. Okay, if, if y'all work with me now, we can, we can do this. And, and I believe you'll receive today and everything will be all right. Amen. Be anxious for some things. Nothing. Now notice that nothing can also be broken down into two words, which is no thing. So the Bible says, in essence, be anxious or don't have anxiety about no thing. And so what I want to bring up this morning to begin with is some of the things that make you anxious. Some of the things that make you anxious. Anybody ever been into a relationship and you was nervous in the service? Well, uh, that didn't go very well. Uh, I'm not t just talking about romantic relationships. I'm talking about relationships, period. I, I, how many of you know that everybody has got a hater? Well, let me, let me, let me say, if, if you know that everybody in here is a hater, than some of y'all haters. <laughs> See, you can't you can't pick and choose what you're gonna say amen to here today. You 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 got to <laughs> we got to go full force because if if you know that there are haters, could it be that you might be a hater? <laughs> and I believe what God is, is is wanting to do not just with you today, but with us today, is to jerk some of that slack out in places that we've been falling short, not, not just with life, but all of life. Yeah, when things roll up on you, you get all nervous, and you're cussing folk out, and you, you cussing, and how many, I don't know how many times a day you got to say, excuse me, because you cussing in front of folk you ain't supposed to be cussing in front of. You doing things, you going off on people you don't usually go off on. You and your husband, the fish mad at you, the dog mad at you, everybody mad at you, but only because of your response to some stuff that's going on in your life. And the Bible says it ought not be so. The Bible tells us in a bunch of scriptures, we're going to go through a few, that in this world, you're going to have trouble. But then he gave us a remedy. He said, but be a good cheer, for I have... Hold up, hold up, hold up. He's what? Well, if he's an overcomer, guess who else is an overcomer? I'm an overcomer. So you can't use the excuse no more. Well, Pastor Jones, you just don't know what I'm going through. I don't care what you're going through. The Bible says whatever you're going through, you're still an overcomer. Yeah. This thing is not about your do. It's about your who. Yeah. Say that with me this morning. I'm an, I'm an overcomer. See, I only use a couple of words in the scripture that says be anxious for no thing. If you are anxious this morning, you came in here anxious. You came in here with a red notice about your electric bill. You came in here about all kind of stuff that you got coming up that's due. 
Let me slow down. You came in here this morning not wanting to see some folk who were going to show up here today. Or you concerned about some folk you thought was going to be here that ain't here. Oh, let me, let me, let me, let me put an exclamation point behind this one. And you didn't even want to be here. And while you're sitting here right now, all you're thinking is, man, I could be doing something else. Well, let me tell you something. Everybody say divine appointment. appointment. Listen to this. Nothing just happens. You ain't here by no accident. You might not even want to show up today. But I guarantee you, because you're here, God going to do something with you today. I've been in them church services. I didn't want to be here. Matter of fact, sometimes I'm here, don't want to be here. Come on now, I mean, this, this is a real deal. You know, I sit here sometimes, especially if there's a good game on TV, and, and, and you know, I want to go home and watch the game, and I be, I be trying to look at the clock on the sly, and, and, and Irvin got a two o'clock curfew. And the game come on at 1.30. Come on, say, hunt your neighbor, say, we just having fun to begin with, we just having fun. Yeah, but there's a, there's a point to this thing, because the reason why you come to the house of God Ain't just so you can show up. The reason we come to the house of God is to learn how to fight. Timothy, Paul told Timothy, fight the good fight of faith. Now, I don't know about you, but I always had trouble with that good fight thing. I ain't never been in a good fight unless I won. Now, I lost some fights, and I believe me, I, I remember, no, I ain't going to go there. Yeah, I done lost some fights. They, they were not good. So what in the world does Paul mean when he said fight the good fight of faith? Well, it has to be that I know I'm going to win when I get in the fight. And listen, if I know I'm going to win, then it's going to govern how, oh, look, listen, how I fight. Nobody say it again? Yeah. If I know I'm going to win, it will determine how I fight in the fight. I didn't say that the exact same way, but most of the time I can't do that. And want to know why? Because this ain't me up here. <laughs> See, what, what you're seeing standing before you today is the anointing of God. See, how many people here last week? Man, when God, when God swept through this place last week, let me, let me tell you something. I had my notes and everything all prepared, and, and Irvin rolled up on me, and he said, don't do nothing. I said, I wouldn't. <laughs> I ain't stupid. <laughs> you, know, you know, because some people would try to fit in wherever they can get in. Well, that ain't God. Because if the anointing, listen, if the anointing rules this house, then you got to go with the flow. Ah, come on now. I said, if, if the anointing's running this house, you got to go with the flow. See, I don't know how many times I've gotten up here and had all kind of notes. And right in the very middle of it, God switched this thing. And that's when people say, would you say that again? I don't even know what I see. Yeah, that's why we got recordings. Because, see, sometimes I had to go over the recordings to listen to me because... Where do, your, where do your teacher get taught? Oh. Hallelujah. So sometimes I had to listen to it myself, and I get fresh revelation every time. Yeah. See, I, I told him in Sunday school this morning, so most people ask this question, well, I want to study the Bible. Where should I start? Wherever you want to. You think God is short-sighted and don't know what you're going through? Like, your problem something he got to go study up for. <laughs> you know, that's the way we treat God. Oh, Mark's got a problem. Hmm, let me see what I'm going to do about that. You got to be out of your mind. God is a God who knows everything, man. He's all powerful. He's all knowing. So whatever you're going through today, let me tell you what. Let me give you what. Let me tell you where the answer lies. The answer lies in you believing. Yeah. What do you really believe? 
Oh, I believe that God will supply all my needs according to his riches and glory by Christ Jesus. Well, if you believe that, how come you worry when you get one of them little red notes in the mail? Well, you said you believed. But your actions don't equal you believing. So in cases like that, listen, the litmus test for you believing is how less anxious do you get every time you get one. Everybody say this one word with me. Say people. people. I don't like the way y'all said that. Say it again. Say people. people. Yeah. See, some of y'all sweating people and people are stopping your face. You so concerned about what everybody else got and how they got it until you can't have individual faith for you. Because now you want to find out seven easy steps to get blessed. Let me tell you, ain't but one step. His name is Jesus. So you walk around and you're looking up what your neighbor got. Well, they got two cars and they slinging dope. What the? Amen. No, that say something wrong. No. What the way y'all oh, I, I thought I, I said something crazy. You know, most of y'all have thought that. You know, everybody else getting blessed. And you've been doing all oh, you know how. I come to church every Sunday. Every time the door open I am there. I even come to Friday night prayer. And uh, me and Irvin and everybody who here, we praying. And we pray on Wednesdays. And all I'm doing all this God. And I still can't see my blessing. That's because you're looking with the wrong eye. Oh, I ain't scared to say it. You're looking with the wrong eye. You need to be looking through the eyes of faith, not through your natural eye. Because listen to this. What you focus on, you will magnify. And if you're looking at, I'm, I'm going to talk to Mike. If we're looking at how much paint we ain't got, we're going to be worried. And one of the things about this whole relationship that we have with God, because countless amounts of times, he says, don't worry, don't fret, don't fear, don't have anxiety. All of those things are commandments from God, and God will not command you to do something that he won't give you the ability to do. So what we've got to do now is figure out what this formula is that God has for us that says, how can I not worry? Because most of us come in here, Pastor John, but you, you just don't know what I'm going through. Look, I'm going to say it again. I don't care what you're going through. You don't have to worry. And the only reason you were worrying, you are worrying is because what you worried about, you, is, you think is bigger than the gods you serve. He ain't bigger than what you, the gods you serve. I don't, care how much, I don't care how much money you owe. I could give y'all, man, Lord Jesus, I could give y'all some testimonies and the numbers will be astronomical. And God ain't never failed yet. Amen. Never failed. But the first thing I had to get out of my life was worry and fear. And this wasn't about you, 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 or anybody in here. This was about me and God. I can't be concerned about how, how you think, what you think about me. Now, here he go again. I, I, I keep on saying it until I... I cannot be concerned about what you think about me. And see, if, if that's you, you're in trouble. Because you ain't going to ever please everybody. There's only one man that I need to please, and his name is God. And the Bible says, oh, hold, hold, hold up now. And the Bible says that without faith, I can't even please him. So faith must be an important ingredient in this whole thing about carefree living. Hunt your neighbor this morning and say, what do you see? Yeah, uh, and I guarantee you, right now, the, uh, I, I, I gave this sermon one, one Monday morning, 
and I think on a Sunday, when I said when you go through some stuff and you're thinking about it all the time, you need to change the channel. Anybody remember that? Yeah, change the channel. Well, let me, let me tell you something else. Not only do you need to change the channel, you need to stop playing the movies in your head. I said stop playing the movies in your head. John's a big movie man. Me and him have discussions about a whole lot of movies. I'm, I'm a movie guy. I like watching movies. A couple, of, you know, a couple of movies like The Godfather and, and, and um, uh, The Five Heartbeats. Just to name a couple of my favorites that I play two, three times a week. Well, y'all look at me. Let me. You know why I do it? Because there's a message in that stuff for me. Even though it's secular, me as a teacher, see, this is what, one thing you got to understand. As a teacher, I get information from everywhere. I'm not a preacher. I'm not an apostle. I'm not an evangelist. I'm a teacher. And a teacher gets information to teach from everywhere he go. I'll, I'll be going down the street on a, and look at a, at a billboard. And all of a sudden I say, oh, Lord Jesus, look at there. And I get something to teach from because, Wood mentioned it this morning, because it has precept and example. And most of the examples, your life is a total example to you. I said, your life is an example to you. You know when you're walking by faith and when you ain't. Stop trying to fool everybody because other people know you ain't walking by faith either. And you, you walk around here trying to dress to impress in faith and it, it's, it, you're failing miserably. Because you think your faith walk has to do with everybody else in here and ain't got nothing to do with them. If you were to die and go home and be with the Lord tomorrow, they wouldn't say, oh, they were such a great man of faith. They might lie on, at your funeral. Because that's where most lies are told, at a funeral. Oh, oh, hey, get off that light, boy. Y'all have to excuse me if I do that. This is what I do. Hallelujah. You can hate me at 115. Now listen, every person in here has faith. Say that with me, I got faith. God did not dispense more faith to one person than he did another. Everybody got the same measure. So how come other people are able to do things that you can't? I'm glad you came here today. Say this to me, faith, faith cometh, cometh by hearing, by hearing, and, hearing, and, hearing, and, hearing and hearing, 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 and infinitum. Oh, y'all, you see? That means it's continuous. It keeps on going. Now, let me tell you where most believers make the mistake. They hear one time. And just because it does not work after hearing one time, they give up, pack their lunch, put all their stuff in a bag, and go home. There's a woman in the Bible who, the Bible describes her as a woman who had been sick with an issue of blood. Listen, 12 long years. Say this to me, faith comes by hearing. Faith comes by hearing. But the Bible says when she heard that Jesus was passing through, listen, she said to herself, oh, please get that. She said to herself, she wasn't talking to none of y'all. She wasn't talking to nobody. She said, if some of y'all, some of us need to stop talking to other folk and start talking to yourself about what God is going to do for you. You don't get extra brownie points for telling everybody else what God's going to do for you. And there's a, well, why is that, Pastor? Because there's haters in the crowd. You tell God, Woo, God going to bless me with a car. That heifer don't need no car. But they'll tell you, oh, yes, yeah, sister, I'm believing with you. And then they go home and have you for dinner. 
See, I'm just talking real talk. See, some of y'all might not like real talk, but that's real talk. Because everybody ain't with you. Yes, sir. Some people want to always want to have you down and out. Hunt your neighbors out. I'm coming up. And when you come up, guess what? You don't get, oh, Lord Jesus, thank you. Oh, thank you, thank you. You don't get up carrying people with you. You can't carry nobody with you until you get up first. Oh, Lord. Man, if you, look, if you can get that one, you can leave here healthy and whole today. Because here's the mistake you make. You try to help folk before you get on your feet. And you done gave all you got. And then it's going to end up both of y'all ain't going to have nothing. <laughs> Be anxious for nothing. Be anxious for nothing. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I, I like that, too. I like that, too. Listen, listen. The answer to every problem you got is believing. How many people believe in for something in here? I ought to see every hand. If I go hand up, I'm going to walk across and slap you. How many people in here are believing for something? See, some of y'all, you better raise your hand. Yeah, you better raise both. You better raise your feet, hands, and everything. There you go. See, because we brought up the situation the other morning in Bible study when it talked about hope. Let me tell you something. Hope is a goal setter. It allows your faith to work. Your faith won't even work without hope. The only thing is, some people hope and leave it out there by itself. I'm just a hoping and a praying. Well, which one are you going to do? You going to pray or you going to hope? You know, I know y'all have heard people say that, and that's the dumbest thing you could ever say in your life, and then say you a believer. Hope is a goal setter. It gives you something to shoot at. Because the Bible says faith is the substance of things. Well, it's just a title deed of what I, of what I see in my spirit. And everybody in here does not see the same thing. Oh, you didn't get that either. I said... Everybody in here does not see the same thing. And let me tell you the reason why. Because your job ain't my job. And you're only able to see those things necessary for you to complete the assignment that God has for you in this earth. Now on a general tip, yeah, that's every, you know, everybody want peace. Everybody say, I want peace. Yeah, but the way there is going to be different for everybody in here. Some of y'all is going to go through your kids. Hallelujah. Yeah, you talk about, I want peace. And then your kids running around like. Oh, I know I'm going to step on some toes today, but I'm going to try to help you. I can, tell, I can tell parents who don't have no peace by looking at their kids. I say, you, you don't have to like me at 115, but right now you got to sit here. They the first one, what you want me to pray for? Oh, pray, I get some peace. Well, if you discipline them kids and stop having them running all around, you better have some peace. Wade in the water. Wade in the water, children. Yeah, the water deep out here, baby. You can't come out here. I, I had uh, my, my, I, I've got some great grandchildren that just came into town, and um, I had I have never seen them. One of them's two, and one's four. And the the father is my grandson, and they came over to my house. The other, I was hoping they'd be here today so I could talk about them, but they came over to my house the other day, and them little kids was jumping all up on the couch, going in my refrigerator. <laughs> And, you know, I had already told my son, my, who is the father of my grandson, I said, they get one. Yeah, you, they, you get one. 
They get to visit. They get to do anything. Within reason now. They get to do anything they want to on that first visit. If you don't want them checked, don't bring them back the second time. And that was, listen, and that was a fair warning. And I ain't seen them since. Oh, they'll get mad at me. They'll get mad at me. But you ask my kids. I'll snatch. <laughs> Why? Because see, that's what believers are lacking is discipline. Yeah. Oh, and li ladies and gentlemen, please li li listen to this. And you can't give what you ain't got. Man, that one will, that one will preach right there. You can't give discipline because you ain't got no discipline. You run around here doing anything, everything you big and grown enough to do, and then you want to check your kids. You better, yeah, why don't you get serious? Yeah. Children are the smartest people that you know. They might not be running around here robbing grocery stores and stuff yet. <laughs> but they run in your house ragged. Hallelujah. I know where did I get here? <laughs> Amen. Oh, I know what. Yeah, I was talking about the things that cause you anxiety. I don't know why I'm stuck on that, but because you see it so often. One, like I said, one of the reasons for children's church is to give y'all a break. And to give me a break. <laughs> no, only because I don't want none of y'all parents to get mad at me, because I know some of y'all get mad at me. <laughs> Pastor John, he, he, just, he just too rough on them kids. Yeah, you, you, you'll thank me later. You'll thank me later. Amen. Amen. Yeah, I, I'm, I'll, if this is you, you know, you ain't got to receive this. The only thing I'm, I'm telling you is this. Later on, when you want to walk by faith, don't let that be an interruption to you walking by faith. That's the whole thing. This ain't about you, your kids, the, the principles involved in it. But this thing is about walking by faith. And if you want a lifestyle of faith, there are certain things you've got to do. Certain things you've got to do. And one of them is don't worry. Amen. Worry and faith are incompatible bedmates. Can't stay together. Either you're in one or you're in the other. Well, we've come up with this thing now called contaminated faith. It's faith, but it's contaminated. It only works when you're in church. It only works when, it, it only works when you can say, how you doing? I'm blessed and highly favored. Walking in righteousness and empowered to prosper. Well, that's what you say in church. But then when you go home, and your husband's drawers laying on the floor. How highly favored are you then? See, I like to hit y'all where you live. You know, y'all, you know, y'all, you know. I, if you've been here any length of time, you know this how this gonna roll. And this ain't nothing foreign to you, cause that's where we flunking at. You ain't flunking inside the four walls. You flunking out there when you get out among other unbelievers. And they see you acting just like the other unbelievers. And now you call yourself a believer. And that ain't faith, ladies and gentlemen. They need to see you at, your, at, your, at the point when you're faced with all kind of difficulty. They ought to still see a smile on your face. And they ask you why you're smiling. And you can say this, because of Jesus. You ain't naming him or her or none of that because of Jesus. And that's what you came here to do. That's the kind of fight you came here to fight. That's what you came here to fight. But some of you, you know, some of y'all just thin skinned. Thin skinned. You're easily offended. And listen, if you're offended, faith don't work either. I'm sorry. Some of y'all here are bitter. 
Yeah. Holding stuff against folk yeah. that you ought to let go a long time ago, but still you want to walk by faith. Well, your faith ain't working. In name only it's working, F-A-I-T-H. But as far as it accomplishing what it was sent to do, it ain't working. Because it's got a barrier. Bitterness. What do you mean I'm bitter? See, see that's what I'm talking about. You see? Yeah, you bitter now. You bitter at folk dead. Yeah, people, your, your, mom, your mom and dad have been dead for years. Now you still blaming them for you ain't got no money. Or well, my mom and daddy had a... Those are only excuses. Stop making excuses. Faith comes by... Hearing. Faith comes by... Hearing. Faith comes by... Hearing. So could it be that if your faith is not where it's working for you, could it be that you've been listening to the wrong thing? Your faith will never do what it was sent to do if you limit what you hear to this little two hour interval on a Sunday morning. No. If faith comes by hearing, listen to this. What have you been hearing? Because if faith comes by hearing, listen to this, ladies and gentlemen. Fear comes by hearing. Some of you watching uh, movies that have to do with occult stuff, you think it's cute. And, and then you want to know how come your kids have nightmares. You won't know how come you have nightmares. You watching the Texas Chainsaw Massacre? And see? All right, he man said he heard up, he heard up, and turned it off. And see that that and, and that's what we do with mental. Listen, if you look at a movie long enough, it gets planted up here. And when you ain't thinking about it. Oh, I'm going to say that again. When you ain't even think about it, the thought of that movie will come. And you'll start, no matter how you try to change the disc on that thing, it'll just keep on playing. It'll keep on playing. Oh, why? Because you listen to it. But see, people say, oh, that's too deep. Oh, oh it's, it's deep until I want my faith to work. And then I'm going to look for everything I can to encourage myself in the Lord. And Rosemary Baby ain't one of them. <laughs> now I'm not, I'm, you know, I'm not, you know, I, I'm, I'm a, I like to watch the news. I, you know, I watch the news every day. And at some point, I got to turn it off because it affects my thinking. You know, I could be sitting there right here and all of a sudden something I saw on the news will pop right up here. And I don't have a physical eraser where I can just say, woo. Or, or, and I have a habit, I do this. Now what in the world does that do? <laughs> and if you heard any noise when I shook my head, it's... <laughs> because if faith comes by hearing, then I gotta watch what I hear. And hearing comes from every where? I said again, hearing comes from everywhere. You can't go some any place without hearing something. Well, what, what, what do I do then? I ain't going to put my hands to my ears. I, I, why don't you ignore what you hear? It's like you do in here. here. <laughs> you know, some of y'all looking at me intently going, and you ain't heard a word I see. Matter of fact, you trying to give me you trying to give me subliminal images like, I wish you hurry up and be and hurry up and get done. I, I, I ain't scared, you know. I, I, ain't no shame in my game because I'd have done the same thing sitting right here. 
So if it's happening to me, man, the devil working four times as much as, as much on you. Because he, he does not want you to hear the word. Turn, turn I, I need, let me go, go to Genesis chapter 3. I, I teach from the scripture often, but I, because it all started in the garden. Amen. Ain't nothing new. Genesis chapter 3, go to verse 6. I mean verse, verse 9. And I use a different title in, in, the, in the message that I've got on that. But it's, it's still applicable. It says the same thing. That's how come you got to watch what you hear. Because hearing will either produce faith or fear. Yeah. And again, it all started in the garden. Ain't nothing you going through now that didn't happen in the garden. We'll say it again. Ain't nothing happening to you now that happened in the garden. Everybody got it? Yeah. Three and nine. Then God, the Lord God called to Adam and said to him, Where are you? Now, if anytime God asks a question like that, it's not that he don't know the answer. So don't get this twisted. God, oh, he, know where, he knew where he was at. So he said, I heard your voice in the garden, and I was afraid because I was naked, and I hid myself. Look at verse 11. And he, God, said, who told you you was naked? You can't go to any preceding scripture and find out that she didn't talk to but one man before. The serpent. Three people was in the garden. The serpent, Adam, and Eve. And God asked the question, who have you been talking to? And look at verse 12. It says, <laughs> Come on now, what y'all look? Look at <laughs> look, yeah, look, 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 look. He said, uh, And he, Adam, said, And then the man said, The woman you gave me. <laughs> She gave me a tree and I ate. So he blamed, listen, he blamed Adam. I mean, he blamed Eve. And the Lord God said to the woman, what is this that you've done? Now, wait a minute, let, let go, go back. I just saw something. Go, go, go back to verse 12. Go back to verse 12. Look, look at this. Adam didn't just blame Eve. He blamed God. It's the woman you gave me. And how many of us have done the same thing? It's that man you gave me. I'll be all right. And, and you was the main one. Oh, Lord, send me a man. Send me a man, Lord. Anyone will do. And, oh, 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 look. But if you got a man now you don't want, I'm sure there's somebody else in here that take him. <laughs> there's some, look, there's some lonely women out there that right now they'll take anything. <laughs> so Adam, <laughs> okay, okay, y'all settle down. <laughs> so Adam blamed God and Eve. He got two for one. And then the woman said it was the serpent who beguiled me or who tricked me. Here's my question to you today. Is the enemy tricking you? And listen, because in John, I used this this morning in, in Bible study. That's why, I mean, in, in Sunday school. Sunday school is good. Y'all need to come to Sunday school. Because this morning I gave, I, I told them about this one scripture that we use, we eat it up. We eat it up in John chapter 4, like around 32, where it says, You shall know the truth, and the truth shall make you free. And most of the time, when you ask people, what makes you free? And they'll say the truth. That ain't what that says. That's not what it says. The only thing that will set you free is the truth you know. So listen, so if you don't know no truth, you ain't going to be free. 
And some of us in here, are, are, we think we know the truth, but what you, ha what you think you know is just a facsimile of the truth. Because you ain't gotten the word for yourself personally. You going by what you done heard other folks say. You know, you got a steady diet coming from right here and you ain't got the book to find out nothing about you, for you. That's why sometimes I had to go over messages. My wife will come over sometime and catch me and I'm, I'm constantly listening. Because I know there's a word for me that God has. Not just for Sunday. I don't, just, I don't, I don't study the word just to know stuff. I study the word and know how to live. Because my life don't just stop and end between 11 and 2. That's stuff going on in my life all the time. Why? I'm on the front line, ladies and gentlemen. Don't nothing, listen, and you, you, you might not receive this, but don't nothing get to you that ain't been through me first. So I got to handle my business when, it's, when, when I'm attacked so I can tell you how to handle business when you get attacked. So if I walk up here and say, oh, ch poor child, don't listen to me. You know where the, does the Bible call you a poor child? Amen. You know, patting you on the back, talking about everything going to be all right. Man, I, I don't. Do, do. See, I'm, I'm going to get mad now. So y'all, I, 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 I just believe that if people were to do things, everything, biblically, then they would get good results. But when you do things out of religion and law and a mixture thereof, you'll always get something that don't look right. Yeah. Everybody say cheer, cheer. Joy. joy, happiness, happiness. Peace. peace. See, those are end results of something. And guess, guess what they are the end results of? The Word of God. If you would use the word of God when you get all confused or when you're faced with things, use the word of God. Not what people have been saying, not what you done heard. I'm talking about getting in here for yourself and find out what did God say. Didn't you, we just read that God said, who told you? Don't mention my name. Well, Pastor John, no, when you got in this word, the thing that you should have done was went behind Pastor Jones and checked out this word to make sure that I said what God said. I don't know how many people have been destroyed because they don't went on the word of a man up here. Me and Woods played with it this morning. I could preach to you this morning. Mary had a little lamb and have you jumping all up and down in the building. And then when you get to God, well, Pastor Jones taught on Mary had a little lamb. I I ain't no. Uh, Mary having a little lamb is not going to help you when you need a bill paid. And you can come down here and dance all, you can dance here at your house all the way here preaching Mary had a little lamb and guess what? By the time you get here, the lamb still ain't going to be born. So instead of you fighting and, and resisting the enemy, you can't resist because there's been no submission to the Word of God. Because you're going by what people say. Man, you need, man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceedeth from the mouth of God. And that works in your prayer life. It works completely across the board when it comes to the word of God. You don't need a word from him. You don't need a word from me. Although we're vessels, the Bible says, how can they hear without a preacher? And how can he preach unless he's been sent? And see, I'm here to testify to people. I might not know a whole lot of y'all, but I know two people been sent. See, I told you there'd be haters in the house. I knew there'd be some haters. I, I knew. But see, the Bible says faith comes by hearing. Sometimes I mentioned, sometimes I got to listen to myself. Because fresh revelation comes all the time. What do you need in your life? And listen, if you find out what you need in your life and you haven't been listening to anything that will supply that need, you won't get what you need.
See, that, that, that's tight, but you know, like I said, you, all, the only thing you depend on is this little two-hour sermon that you get from an hour and a half, 45, whatever. Well, however the amount is that you get right here, and then you, then you go home, and you don't open your Bible up again until next Sunday. But you expect to be a great man and woman of faith. If you could see yourself in the spirit today, depending on what you have fed him, He ain't got to be on no diet, I guarantee you that. <laughs> I'm a big boy. But I'm big because I eat. <laughs> but you can't see my spirit. And nobody can see yours. Only you know. Yeah. Only you know where that's at. So if you you know for yourself whether you see whether you're feeding your spirit a steady diet of the word, or better still, you know what you've been feeding your spirit. Yeah. Who you been who you been listening to? And you, and let, let me tell you something. I, I was talking to my wife this morning, and you can't go by every. If, if I keep my TV on Christian television. You, you better be careful, because I done heard some people on Christian television spewing some stuff that I'm going. He must be out of his mind. Here you are believing for healing, and then you run across some joke on TV talking about healing went away with the Old Testament. Man, you must be, what you've been smoking. This is what I'm, so, you know, the steady diet of what you ingest is going to have to be up to you. And you have to rightly divide that stuff that you be listening to. And we had some people last Sunday who got confused about some of the things that happened here last Sunday. But, you know, I'm, I'm, I don't mind explaining to them what went on. That was God. You was pushing people down. Well, ask some of them people who fell down whether they got pushed or not. I see that stuff on TV. See, that's what you've been feeding yourself. You've been feeding yourself fake and furious. <laughs> yeah, you've been feeding yourself all that. Didn't you expect something spiritual to happen? Won't happen. You got to be locked into the Word of God. Okay, listen to this. I have a prayer that I pray. And I have a blank that I put in the prayer so you can insert anything that you need to insert in there. It's about this no worry thing. Because if God tells me I don't have to be anxious about something, then I need to know the Word to give back to Him that will calm my fears and erase all my doubts. Because if I'm anxious, there's unbelief present. Oh, come on now, I get that. I said, if I'm anxious, there's unbelief present. So my job, and it ain't God's job, it's my job to rid myself of all the fret and worry that I've let in. John 14, 1 says, let not my, your heart be troubled. That ain't God's job. That's your job. Uh-oh. See, some of us, oh God, take this away from me. What? I, I, let me give you an example. Uh, you know, and some, again, I might have to tilt over a cow, but that's okay. Lord, take these cigarettes away from me. What is God going to do with a cigarette? Now see, I know some of y'all looking at me crazy now. Like, I did that and it worked for me. You can't find it in here. It might have worked for you because that's he knew he knew he knew your heart was pure, pure and you were stupid. That didn't go over real well either. No, what, what, what God will do, God will enable the desire to, men, to diminish. But he don't smoke. 
So what are you gonna do with a cigarette? Well, that, that's picky. Last time I looked, the Bible was picky. Because it tells me the only way you're going to get to heaven is to believe that God raised Jesus from the dead. Now believe anything else and expect to go to heaven. But that's too picky. Come on now, I'm, I'm talking about getting what God has planned for you. The Garden of Eden, Eden experience, heaven right here on earth. God promised that to us. And I think it's time out for us walking around here nervous in the service. The Bible says in Matthew 6.33, he clothed the birds of the air. Yes. Anybody in here ever seen a nervous bird? No. You ain't never woke up in the morning and saw a bird on the limb going, oh, I wonder what I'm going to eat today. <laughs> and when I see that, I start worrying. <laughs> But early in the morning, check it out now. Early in the morning, you get up and you hear the birds singing. Man, they chirping to beat the bird. Now, you know, you get up like 11, 12 birds are done what they got to do. They go on about their business. <laughs> you know, I'm talking about an early bird. You get up like 4, 30, 5 o'clock in the morning. Man, birds are chirping all over the place. And I believe, this is just me now, I believe that that's the birds starting their day off giving God praise and glory. <laughs> Because he said early in the morning. You can't get no earlier than 4 or 5 o'clock in the morning. Well, I get up 11. I don't hear no birds. That's because they done ate, gone to sleep, take a nap. They done done their due diligence for the day. But see, you, you got, we got this thing where we want to not make examples of things we see every day. Especially when God uses them as an example. He said he clothed... The, You've never seen a nervous bird. And there's a reason why. Because they believe the word of God. You just say, you go talk about birds believing the word of God. <laughs> Trees obeyed him. <laughs> well, see, the, Pastor Joe, he just gets so picky. I'm going to tell you, I'm, it's not picky. I just want your faith to work. If you saw Jesus cursing the fig tree, I, I, I can imagine. Man, y'all see Jesus? Uh, can, can anybody call it 911 and, and have him committed because he's talking to trees? I saw him. Did you, didn't y'all see him? He talked to a fig tree. And he told the fig tree, dry up. See, because we wouldn't have been looking with our spiritual eyes. We'd have been looking with our natural eye. And especially when nothing happened. Well, look, I, ain't nothing happened to the tree, so. Uh, he must, yeah, yeah he, Jesus must have lost his mind. And then when they came back. Ah! The fig tree that he cursed is now dead. When did you speak to something? And the reason you still see it is because you ain't spoke to it. Oh, oh. Look, look, you, you tolerating it. Oh, you you tolerating it because you think it, you look crazy putting all your bills on the desk and getting you and your wife how can two walk together except they be agreed? You and your wife sitting there praying and, and, and praying that God would give you debt cancellation. And, and all of and, and That's too spiritual for you. Well, let me tell you something. It works. It works. I could... Like, oh. I could give you testimonies right now of calling things that be not as though they were and the things that be not is. Oh, y'all. I said, and the things that be not is. Only because I refuse not to submit to God. 
and I resisted the enemy and he had to go. See, some of you ain't resisting because you're scared of him. It's called fear. You're scared of the devil. Somebody mentioned the devil. You're looking at all kind of horror movies, but when they mention the devil, oh man, don't talk about the devil. Oh, I'll give you that one we talked about the other Sunday. Oh, don't pray for patience. Because if you pray for patience, you'll get trouble. Now that's ignorance going somewhere to see. The Bible says that patience was a fruit of the Spirit. So if it's a fruit of the Spirit, it's mine. Matter of fact, oh, oh, oh. matter of fact, I ain't got to pray for it. It's mine automatically because it's a fruit of my in, ingrown spirit. All I got to do is produce it. And you can't produce it because you won't open up your mouth. My tongue is the pen of a ready writer. I have patience. I have peace. I have joy. I'm happy in the Lord. And you need to be saying that stuff instead of looking at all the things you go through. Talking about, oh man, I don't know what I'm going to do. I know what I'm going to do. I'm going to pray for you. Man, it's time, it's time. You need to trouble. Oh, hold up. Thank you, Lord. You need to trouble your trouble. I'm going to say it again. Yeah, you need to trouble your trouble. Trouble, stand up and you fear back. Woo, Mufasa, Mufasa. No, 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 no. Trouble. <laughs> Tr <laughs> trouble pop up and you get all scared and nervous and... Man, you better stand up when you're supposed to stand up. Let me tell you something. The devil, the devil, oh, thank you. L listen to this. When you talk, that if, you, if you're talking the word of God, the devil don't know whether it's you or Jesus talking. And the only way that he knows it ain't you is you say something stupid. You say something that ain't in the Bible. Like, yes, he said, if I take one step, he'll take two. The devil knocking you out because you can't find that in the Bible nowhere. And the devil said, that wasn't Jesus. But as long as you quote the word of God, when you're in trouble, the enemy does not know you from Jesus. Man, that's heavy. That's heavy. That's good. So why are you up here preaching Mary had a little lamb? <laughs> Jack jumped over the candlestick. Jack and the bean stalk. Why are you preaching all that, trying to get an amen out of everybody? The devil is whooping your head. Hunt your name and say, what you gonna do? What you gonna do? See, you can get religious all you want to when you leave here, and you can still get whipped. See, you gotta separate what it, this ain't about nobody, it's about what you know. Well, I don't I just don't agree with Pastor Jones. Now listen, the only thing I want you to do today is to agree with the word of God. 